John Lilly filling in for Eric Webb at that wing back position. Here's Red on the run. He's out near the first down. He should be within inches. Let's see where they mark it. And also a special note should go to Billy Ingles, who's been filling in for star Eric Webb on defense. Uh, coach uh, this morning, Coach Joel Hicks said it will take at least three different guys to substitute for a caliber player as Eric Webb. And the, the officials have called time out so they can measure on this play. And for the fans out there, they probably continue to hear in the background an air horn. And that's an air horn that Pulaski County fans take with them as they go around the state uh, trying to inspire their team on to victory. Yeah, I, uh, I remember saying last year it sounded like something from the wreck of the old 57 <laughs> or something like that, but it's an actual real freight train air horn that they bring a compressor for, and all I can say is this year at least it's on the other side of the field so we can hear ourselves think. <laughs> Yeah, it can really be a shock if you're standing close to it when it is blown. But the substitute for uh, the air horn last year will be this year's weather, which is very brisk. Wind chill factors have got to be just a little above zero today. By the time you watch this game, you will have read in the paper how bad it was. But let me tell you, being here without a meteorologist, we're just, just kind of making it up. But it's, uh, it's a tough day out here. Glad you joined us for the broadcast today. 8.06 left to play in the second quarter. It was a short yardage situation, third down in inches, and I think that Pulaski County gains the first down with plenty to spare. Yeah, as you say, it was very short yardage on that, only a few inches, and they were able to pick that up. But again, the Annandale defense continues to play very inspired football, and they aren't giving up anything uh, without Pulaski having to really work a lot harder to get it. When you see a score 0-0 zero, zero at this point in the game, you start to think in the back of your mind, it's going to be a break, it's going to be a special team, something like that that might decide this game. Well, we saw that last week in the game between Annandale and Thomasdale, and it was the punt return that did it, so it'll be interesting to see what happens today. On the first down and 10 run for Pulaski County, they decide to give it a straight ahead play to Red from the fullback position. He's good for three yards. Neither team has really tried anything too, too fancy. Even when Annandale was passing, they played it kind of conservative in that McPhail held the ball instead of trying to throw an interception. Yeah, you're right about that. And I think that obviously is caused by the weather with McPhail's decision down close to uh, Pulaski's goal line. Eves is the quarterback. He barks the signals in that single wing formation. Here comes one of those reverses maybe. Ball ends up in the hands of uh, number three for uh, Pulaski County, Billy Ingalls, one of the guys we said who was filling in for Eric Webb, their star running back, who, by the way, gained 100 yards in each of the last two playoff games. So he steps up at playoff time. I asked the coach about that. I said, you know, his season stats aren't that big. And he said, yeah, but the last couple of weeks, he's really hit hard. And I think it's thing you really see about very, very good players, a great player, they really their level of performance increases on the money game, so to speak, and that would be something that probably would be expected based on how good a play he is. They're down in six. Pitch to Lewis. He's shut down by the Adams defense. They were just exhorting their crowd to give him a bit of a cheer, and I think it can happen just at the right moment as it's going to bring up a fourth down and at least five yards for Pulaski County, and once again, they're going to have to punt. And as you said, once again, we'll try to continue to look for that one big play that might start to be a break if this game continues a 0-0 game in the state championship here this afternoon. Ingles back in punt formation for Pulaski County. He has a 36 and a half yard average coming into today's game. That's six yards better than Art, the kicker for Annandale. So there is a bit of an advantage there, but not today, as not only does he shank it, but the wind just brutalized the ball, took it all the way over into the stands. You, you don't see that, and especially these stands are not close here at Woodson High School. And that looks as if though that might have been a 10 yard punt from where the official is marking it, but you could see once the ball was not kicked well, the winds just stopped it almost completely. And that's the kind of effect this wind is going to have on the game as it continues this afternoon. Well, they certainly took the star kick returner Prince Addy out of the play, but I don't think it was much of a gain for Pulaski. But I think, I think on the other hand, with Annandale now having the wind behind them if they want to try something long, if they get a little bit more into the territory of Pulaski, uh, they would have a lot of air under the ball. McPhail, play action, rolling. As a receiver, Seeger right in his hands. You can rack this one up. 10, 5, touchdown. As they say in the song, whoop, there it is. 55 yards, McPhail to Seeger, and Annandale's on the board just like that. And that was a great time to use that play because you get the ball again close to midfield. You've had an opportunity to score. You haven't gotten your points on the board. You decide McPhail rolls out to his left, gets good position, gets it out to Seeger, who makes a fine catch as he made even last week, and he takes it in unmolested for the first points of this game here this evening, or afternoon, rather. It'll be time to kick for Chris Seeger. 
Oh, he's panting down there. You know, it doesn't even sound fair. Guy's got to run 55 yards, then he has to come back and kick, but I think he can probably handle it. He likes the problem. Puts this one, looks like, right down the middle. And indeed, it's 7-0 in favor of Annandale. And uh, Willie, well, I was wrong. It was certainly a lightning strike play. Let's take another look at this great pass. The play action, really the key to this play. Yeah, it is. It's a play action to Jennings by McPhail. McPhail rolls out to his left, gets good position, and is able to get the ball over the defender to Seeger. Seeger makes a fine catch, a diving attempt to knock it down by the defender from Pulaski County, but not enough, and number 11, Seeger, takes it in for the first points of this state championship game. 7-0, Seeger scores all seven points as he puts up the extra point. And just as simple as that, with 5.49 left to play in the first half, the Adams of Annandale, the representatives of Northern Virginia and the champions of the Northern region have gone on top in this football game, and a low-scoring game will probably favor Annandale. Keeping Pulaski's defense on the field was one of the goals they had at the beginning of this game, and so far, so good. They've done a great job doing that. You're right about that because the offense has not helped the Pulaski County Cougars at all so far here this afternoon, and they've continued to find themselves under pressure from this Adam, Adamdale team. Well, the wind certainly has become a factor even on the kickoffs. As Seeger was approaching the ball, it wouldn't even stay on the tee for him. <laughs> So he'll get a little help in steadying the ball. Right-footed, soccer-style kicker with the wind at his back. And well, having just made that big run and got the adrenaline going, he should get a good kickoff here. This one will come down. And here comes the return by Pulaski County and another big hit, this time against Jamar McNair, number 17 for Pulaski County. And once again, they showed the deficit in field position on the kickoff. Yeah, you can really see that they were only able to get that kickoff return out to their own 24-yard line. And again, that's very good field position for Annandale. And their defense is, I think, continuing to improve their level of play. And Pulaski County really needs to find their offense that they will be able to show this afternoon. Just about five and a half minutes left in first half action. This is the best of the best. The two teams in Virginia that represent, well, they, they have about 110 AAA schools in Virginia. They divide them in half, and they have uh, Division Five and Division Six. Six being the biggest, so 50-some-odd schools have competed for the right to be here on this field today. And only two are left, and only one of them will go home to state champions. Will it be Pulaski repeating from last year in Virginia, or will it be Annandale with their long tradition racking up their fifth state championship in the last 20 years or so? I'll make it 30 years or so. I went back into the 60s. Here comes Pulaski County. They'll have something to say about it before it's all over. Eves on the keeper on the line of scrimmage. Gang tackled by four or five members of the Annandale Adams defense. A couple of defensive backs there, which means great reaction from them. They, they didn't think passing. They don't think Pulaski's going to pass, so they need to get to the point of attack quickly. And it's not only great reaction, but I think it really shows that the defense of Annandale has studied this team very well because Pulaski County hasn't really been able to fool them with anything. They get great position even after fakes. They're making the stops. They're on the line. Hardly any yard is to be picked up on the running plays. And it appears that Pulaski County would do better trying to still run inside an attack than some of the things they've attempted to do on the outside. The Cougars of Pulaski County in white with the gold trim and red numerals. Eves again on the, rather he's doing the blocking and like he had a little trouble hanging on the ball out there. Eves on the keeper. I finally got it straight there. <laughs> Second there, I thought he'd given the ball off to uh, Ingles, but Ingles was doing the blocking. Yeah, in the way you run that option with Ingles inside, he had a very good fake. Eves had a very good fake to Ingles, but he kept the ball himself. Only picked up about three yards on that play, now forcing a third and seven for Pulaski County. If you're just tuning in, this game was taped several days ago this past weekend. You're seeing it here now on Home Team Sports. It's a very cold day. It's in Fairfax, Virginia, Annandale in red, the Northern Regional Champions versus the Northwestern Regional Champions. That's Pulaski County. And they attempt to run, and this time it really doesn't work as Burks on the carry. His first of the game gets stacked up at the line of scrimmage, and it'll bring up third down and long. That was Burks on the carry, and Steve Dredge on the tackle, really underneath Burks, picked up New Yardage, fourth down again for Pulaski County. 
And it is fourth down, meaning punt formation again. At least the fourth punt so far for Pulaski County, or fourth uh, turnover. Maybe Addy will have a chance to show us his running speed as he stands back on his 40-yard line. Ingles' kick is low. He's having a heck of a time today. Taken by an up man for Annandale. And you know, I think there was definitely some interference on that play, Willie, as the Annandale man, who was uh, number 20, that's Todd Milan, Millen rather, was knocked into the ball. And uh, I don't think that you can do that. Uh, let's see if the officials are going to talk about it out there. If we get a chance to see it on the replay, uh, Annandale was going to let that ball go, but they were pushed into it by Pulaski County. But the thing that has to happen on a day like this with that ball being kicked into the wind, Annandale has to realize that it's not going to be that long a kick, so you really just need to have gotten away from it, let the ball fall, and then go back on offense. Now, again, Pulaski County has an opportunity at the 50-yard line. This will be a key time for Pulaski County because there's only three minutes left to play in the first half, and if they want to score now, it'd be the time. Willie, let's take a uh, close look there. I think Millen was pushed into the ball. Well, you're going to see some pushing the ball just kicked very low, and as the ball comes down, Annandale can't get away from it, and there will be another player, or really, it was attempted to be caught, and with that, the ball popped loose, and then the recovery was made by Pulaski County. Well, in Crittenton's defense, I think he only jumped on the ball because he thought it had been touched by his teammate, Millen. Here's the reverse. This time, it ends up in the hands of Ingles. That's the play that uh, got Pulaski County to the state championship last year. And it was executed by Webb for three touchdowns last year, but with Webb not quite being here, it hasn't worked as well against Annandale. There was a flag on the play. Let's get the preliminary indication. A legal procedure against the offense, according to Tony Scarcelli, our referee today. Rest of the officials, the umpire is Jim Orr. Lee McDaniel is our linesman. Line judge, Larry Jokum. Back judge is Jeff Horton. Field judge, Daryl Parson. And working the clock up here with us today is Eddie Spain. These officials, by the way, will come from the Norfolk area, the southeastern region of the state, uh, in order to be impartial. Allegedly, impartial. you never know. No, I think they are. They always do a fine job. We see plenty of them. This time, Eves hangs on, dribbles the ball, ends up losing a lot of yardage. This could end up being an Annandale touchdown. Now oh, it's knocked out of the hands of the defender. Is that Addy running along the sideline there? Now it looks like for Annandale, it was number 81, Ernest Amonqua. Amonqua picked up the ball and was off to the races and just at the last minute was knocked out of bounds at about the 12-yard line. Annandale, another break for them. You're right about that. And that play for Eves from Pulaski County has not worked well at all this afternoon. And unfortunately, on that play, not only did it not work, but he fumbled. And as you said, Amonqua was able to pick it up and bring it back all the way to the Pulaski County 11-yard line, giving Annandale a great opportunity with two minutes, 10 seconds left in this first half. Yeah, it's darn near perfect timing for them. In fact, they've called timeout, as you see Dick Adams, the coach, runs out on the field to talk to his Adams. Interesting, it's Adams coaching <laughs> the Atoms, and um, he's going to take advantage of this last two minutes and 10 seconds. Now, earlier I mentioned that you could own your own copy of today's game. It's as simple as this. For only $15, you'll have a professionally duplicated VHS tape, start to finish of this broadcast. It's available from the game of the week, 1403, Huguenot, H-U-G-U-E-N-O-T Road in Midlothian, Virginia, a Richmond suburb. Zip code is 23113. Make sure you write on the check that you send, and you must send a check what game you want, and this would be the Annandale-Pulaski State Championship game. And it's been a good one so far, especially if you're an Annandale fan, as they hold a 7-0 lead and have the ball on the 12-yard line with 2.10 left to play in the first half. And this is a great opportunity for Annandale to score another touchdown and take a 14-0 lead in at the half, which would really put Pulaski County in a much deeper hole. But Annandale has continued to play well. They didn't capitalize early in this game on a couple of turnovers and fine drives by themselves, and now an opportunity exists for them to try to seize a little bit greater control of this ball game. Santa Ana behind McPhail. Jennings is the tailback. Goes to Jennings. He's got some running room. He's down to about the, well, great second effort. Almost pronounced him down at the six. He gets three more. He's to the three on second down now, and three yards to go. That was just a straight ahead inside running play to Jennings. He just showed a lot of good leg drive and being able to get past that first wave of defenders 
from Pulaski County. As you said, took it down to what appears to be the three-yard line, and now they have second and goal from that point. Actually, Willie, they can get the first down without getting the touchdown, as the yard marker shows maybe about the two-yard line would do it for a first down. So this is almost a free play for Annandales. They need one for the first down, three for the touchdown. Twin backs in the backfield. Give goes to Jennings. He's in. It's another touchdown for Annandale, and the fans go wild at Woodson High School as the Adams have jumped out to a 13-0 lead just before halftime. They capitalized so quickly on that opportunity of the fumble by Eves from Pulaski County. Two plays in position, 11 yards in the end zone. You take a 13-0 lead with 1.22 left in the first half. Well, Annandale has not played a perfect game, but they've certainly played a technically much better game than Pulaski County up here to halftime. They really have, and it was pretty interesting early on, wondering whether they were going to be able to capitalize on some of these miscues by Pulaski County. Seeger, right down the pipe. 14 to nothing with the point after touchdown. Now the Adams of Annandale, the Northern Region champions, hold a 14 nothing lead at halftime. This is exactly the situation that Pulaski County would rather not be in. As a come from behind team, they're more of a ball control team and that's a little more difficult. They don't really have a passing attack. Willie, let's look at that three yard run again. And here again is that last play for the touchdown. The ball will go to Jennings on the play. And as McPhail hands off to Jennings, who just had great blocking at the point of attack, one of the defensive linemen for Pulaski County had a chance, but had no ability to stop Jennings getting in for that second touchdown of the afternoon for Annandale. By the time Newcomb got his arms on Jennings, it was pretty much all over but the cry. And it's now 14 to nothing in favor of Annandale. They'll kick off now and move right to left with the win. And I, as we talked about, Willie, it turned out to be a key, a scoreless first quarter. Then the second quarter, Annandale has the advantage of the win, and it seemed to really help them. You're right about that. And with them being able to score to Sega, the advantage was that they could throw the ball because they had the win behind them in the second quarter. And they uh, kind of wave off this attempt at the kick. It looked like maybe the ball was having a little problem there, uh, staying straight on the tee. Interesting formation they run, Willie. It almost looks as if Prince Addy, if he wants to, can take a whack at that ball on the way by. It's a little confusing maybe for the defense. Well, that would be something that could work well if you were trying to kick an onside kick trying to cause your defenders to not know which side of the field you were going to kick it to, but that's not something Annandale needs at this point. Well, Seeger, uh, I'm sure, has got his uh, chest puffed up uh, thinking that he's a massive kicker today, but 30 mile an hour wind, it turns <laughs> that one into a touchback. It's a, it's one of those, it's a great day when the wind's at your back, but it's not when it isn't. Yeah, you're right about that, and we've really seen that in some of the punts by Pulaski County that has really created a great problem for them here this afternoon. Yeah, Billy Ingalls probably can't wait until the next quarter when the wind gets at his back. Of course, he's hoping he doesn't have to punt. Ingalls has also been substituting for Eric Webb, their uh, all-everything running back. Twin backfield, single wing formation, Lewis on the carry. Lewis is rumbling. Crittenden makes the tackle, but only after a 20-yard gain by Lewis. And that's a little bit more like his average coming in. Now, Willie, consider this. There are running backs that have nine yard per game per rush averages, but not too many that have run 130 times in the year. He's got almost 1,200 yards and still maintains a nine yard average. That's really incredible, and that was the best run so far for Pulaski County today. It takes him up to their own 40 yard line, and the pressure is on not only Pulaski to try to get points, but Annandale doesn't want to give away an advantage that they've gained. Uh, worked very hard for so far in the second quarter. Seems like they found something uh, that they're trying with Lewis that's working a little bit better as he's run left and run right, both for long gains. This one will bring up a uh, second down and short yardage as timeout has been called on the field. And this timeout will be assessed to Pulaski County. And if my math is correct, that both teams still have two timeouts left. Well, I guess one advantage for Annandale is that with Pulaski County having to throw against the wind, they primarily would probably have to keep the ball on the ground. So that is one of those factors that Annandale doesn't have to worry about as much, and that's the passing aspect at this point in the game. This is the Virginia AAA Division VI State Championship game for all the marbles. 
in white with gold and red is the defending state champion, Pulaski County. They're down 14 0 just before halftime to the team in red. Those are the Adams, the Annandale Adams of Northern Virginia. And they're playing pretty much on Annandale's home turf here at W.T. Woodson High School in Fairfax, Virginia, the designated site here. They've got great stand capacity here for visitors. And when Pulaski comes, you better have it. You're right about that because we saw the number of fans that came from Pulaski County to the state championship last year and as many or more here this year also to cheer their team on hopefully to some victory. Second down and two. Lewis takes it for the first down down to the 48 yard line of Annandale but time's a waste in 44 seconds left to play in the first half. They stop the clock momentarily for the moving of the chains but once that's complete Pulaski County will be watching the last 40 seconds tick off this clock. And it might be one of those times where Eves, who doesn't pass much, may have to pass on this play. Well, you're getting to the point where they really don't have a choice except to try to put the ball in the air to give themselves an opportunity. Lewis stopped by a great defensive play there by the Annandale Adams. And that was number 65, Steve Dredge, who we saw go out injured earlier. He's back. It's the championship game. He doesn't want to miss it. And Dredge has had an outstanding game so far. He and Maurice Adams have continued to make many tackles across this field against this Pulaski County team. There's 10 seconds left in this first half, ticking down 8-7, and Pulaski County has to try to get off a play very quickly, even if they want to attempt a Hail Mary. I don't think that's going to happen. Zero shows on the clock. Annandale's headed for the locker room. They're in a hurry to get out of here because they don't want to see Pulaski County have any more plays. And as we draw to the end of the first half, very surprising as far as I'm concerned, Willie. I thought this would be a little bit more high scoring, and I honestly wouldn't have been surprised if Annandale was behind by a touchdown or so at the end of the first half, and that they would have to go to the locker room and regroup it. Exactly the opposite. You're right about that, but there are two things that are working against Pulaski County and this game to be high scoring. One is the win and the windshield condition. The other is the fact that one of the outstanding players for Pulaski County, Eric Webb, is not playing today. So putting those two things together, it limits what your offense can do, and an injury has limited what the opponent can do so that in itself will cause the the game to be somewhat more low scoring than we might have thought on a three yard run by Jennings and a 55 yard reception by Seeger plus two extra points the Annandale Adams have a 14 nothing lead as we head to halftime we'll take a bit of a break you'll see the score pop up on your screen as 14 to nothing and when we come back it'll be second half action from WT Woodson High School in Fairfax County Virginia Annandale's beating Pulaski County but there's more to come on the Chip and Ham Sports Medicine Game of the Week Special Edition on HTS. And we're back for second half action at Woodson High School in Fairfax, Virginia, the site of the AAA Division VI playoff game between Annandale and Pulaski County, 14-0 Annandale on top. Some halftime stats to look at. Jennings for Annandale's got a touchdown and 35 yards rushing. Santa Ana, 32 yards rushing on six carries. And uh, that's pretty much the rushing stats for Annandale. They had 65 on the ground total, 65 yards total rushing. And uh, Pulaski County, 69 yards rushing. That's not very much for a team that averages like 350 on a game. 69 yards in the first half for Pulaski. You're right about that, and that's reflected itself on the scoreboard with 0 for Pulaski County, 14 for Annandale. Well, the kick is underway. Here it comes back the other direction, taken by Pulaski County as they will uh, take over possession at the beginning of the second half. Jamar McNair brings it back to the 17-yard line, and that's where the Cougars will get underway. I'm Dave Bird along with Hall of Famer Willie Lanier. Welcome to our special broadcast today. Now, we do these broadcasts uh, each week during the football season in central Virginia, around the Richmond area. And we're traveling along with the teams now all the way to the state in this special home team sports broadcast. Here come the Cougars of Pulaski County. Let's see if they've learned anything in the locker room here as they get ready for the second half. John Lilly filling in for Webb at that wing back position. Lewis carrying as he had so much in the first half. Lewis comes into the second half with 10 carries. Adds another one here. And Steve Dredge, defensive tackle for Annandale, again through the line of scrimmage, made a real solid stop. And the thing that we always reflect on is that at the half, the coaches have had a chance to take a look at what was available to them in the first half, see what adjustments that they make. And normally you will see that unfold on that first possession of the second half. And indeed, if Pulaski County is going to set any kind of a tone here, now would be the time. Lewis breaks through. He's got some running room. He bounces off a couple of 
tackle attempts before Herlins finally wraps him up and brings him down. And Willie, he's far too dangerous a runner to just kind of shoulder an arm tackle. You really got to lock him up. You're right about that. And you can see on that last play, Annandale appeared to not really get a solid tackle. And Lewis almost had a chance to break for much more yardage, picked up a positive first down. And we'll just have to continue to see how this execution will continue for Pulaski County. First down to Red. Red right up the middle for a gain of about five or six yards. That's what Pulaski County would like to see pretty much all the time if they can. Let's take another look at the run by Lewis. What's the straight ahead? It's a handoff to Lewis coming to his right, and he picked up real good yardage, slipped a tackle, and that tackle there that was missed allowed him to pick up additional yardage, and that's the kind of thing you always have to worry about. The sun is playing cat and mouse with the clouds. Now it's turned fairly much overcast here. Again, the wind is blowing a whole gale, and the wind chill factors are down near zero. These teams are really gutting it out today. Lewis on another carry. He may go all the way on this one. Lewis has the speed, but he's taken down from behind. Give credit to the Annandale secondary for catching up to one of the faster backs that we've seen. He broke one for a touchdown last year on a kickoff return, and nobody touched him. And he looked like he was out underway again on about a 30-yard run. And that was a great execution that we had talked about earlier, which we had not seen Pulaski County exhibit. Lewis to his left. He cut up field early in the game. He had that same kind of play set up, but he cut outside. But with him cutting up field, and a great tackle by Todd Millen from the defense of Annandale stopped him from going all the way. Pulaski County sets up again, and they continue to run that conservative offense. Brian Red, number seven, the fullback, averaging six and some change yards per carry, a little bit short of his average, and we'll take a look at another great run. Here's the replay of that play. Eves turns hands off to Lewis, and he cuts inside that block. By and, Red. And at that point, he's off to the races, having a chance to look as if though he might go all the way. Great speed, but Todd Millen makes a diving tackle to keep them from scoring on that play. Definitely credit Millen with that big tackle. Second down and eight for Pulaski County. Once again, Carl Lewis running along the line of scrimmage, bouncing off. He's not a big punishing back by any means. Carl Lewis only 5'8 and 150, but he does seem to be tough to tackle. He really can be, and the thing that you'll notice the difference in the first half and the second half is the execution at the point of attack for Pulaski County, the decisions that are being made by the running back reading the offensive lineman and the kind of block that he makes, and that's something that they weren't doing in the first half. And also something that Annandale didn't have happen in the first half. Their defense has been out there for a while now for the first four minutes of the second half. They really got a chance to rest a lot, so they may need it here in this half as Pulaski County is underway. Pitch to Lewis. This time he's hemmed in as he tries to make the cut, but he only needed about a yard and a half, and he easily has the first down for the Cougars. Two things occur at halftime for the team that's behind. One is taking a look at what you need to do to execute. The other is that you have to have the emotion coming out to do something positive if you get that ball on the opening possession, realizing that if you don't, then obviously the deficit can expand. So they're doing both of those things, executing well, and the emotion is still high. And now it's to Annandale to try to keep this thrust from getting a, allowing a touchdown for Pulaski County. Once again, a handoff to Lewis, tripped up from behind on a great play there by the Annandale defense. Turns out to be number 85. That's David Ralph. Rather 65, wasn't it? Yeah, that was 65. That was Steve Dredge again coming through on that play. And Dredge just continued to have an outstanding day for the Annandale defense. And on a play that was, again, a sweep to the left by Lewis, he was able to come from his defensive tackle position and make the stop in the backfield, forcing a two-yard loss, now setting up a second and 12 from Annandale's 18-yard line. Dredge leads the team in sacks. You can see why he gets into the backfield very quickly. Lewis again on the run, tries to run up the middle. Now, with the loss on the last play and only a short gain on this play, it's going to bring up third down and just about exactly 10 for Pulaski County. Here's a key time for Annandale to thwart this drive. You're right about that. And on that last play, Donovan Yarbrough, the left end, penetrated into the backfield to disrupt. And that's the thing that has to happen for Annandale. They have to get into that backfield, disrupt the flow of the play before Lewis can get to the line of scrimmage and use his great speed to pick up additional yardage. Lilly is the wing back. Red is the first back. Eves on the keeper hasn't worked up to now. They have got that play covered, Willie. Really. Every time Eves has tried to hang on to the ball and get around the outside, the pursuit by a very quick Annandale defense has been excellent. There's no question about that. Ernest Amakwa, number 81, was not fooled at all on the play. The fake by Eves thought that it was going to hold the defensive end. But not only that, but you can see the great speed by Amakwa where he was able to get the proper angle and made the stop for really no gain. Maybe even a loss of a uh, yard or so. 
It'll be fourth down and long for those Cougars, and they will go for it. Yes, and the Cougars realizing that with the wind blowing at them in this position on the field, they need to try to get points, and they're going to go for it on the fourth down. Both sides cheering their offense, their defense. Here comes Lewis, got some running room, cuts inside down to the 25-yard line, but that's only a gain of about four, and Annandale will take over on downs, and that has energized their team. They've now got the emotion. Mo is on their side. You're right about that, and that was number 55, Corey Peterson, the first one making the stop on that play, and that's what you want to do from a defensive standpoint. You realize that you're going to be on the pressure championship game changes that are made at the half but what you want to do is quote bend but don't break and that's what happened for Annandale they've been a lot they were under a tremendous assault but they able to hold and give the ball back to their offense with a little over six minutes to play here in the third quarter Jennings on the run after Annandale stiffens and takes over on downs at the 15 yard line Annandale wearing their red uniforms today that's what they wear when they're at home the Adams come in with that 12 and 1 record versus 13 and 0 for Pulaski County, but you can basically throw those records out at this point. You're right about that. And it was pretty interesting watching what.